So hey guys, what's up everyone? This is Akshay and welcome to Akshay GB show. Uh, we have a very special guest with me here today. It's Patrul Hegde, one of my seniors in my college and uh, he was kind of like an inspiration to me and many other people, especially in my department. I think uh, he started, I think, in photography. And I, I remember the fact that, you know, when we used to come in the uh, amphitheater in the college, Prajwal like this video used to display, all his edits used to be displayed and that, you know, and after engineering, he's done a lot of work into his life in terms of uh, filmmaking, creative to this and that thing, right? So, uh, Prajwal uh, has completed his uh, electrical engineering in Tainan Sagar College, passed over 2020. Also, he's worked as a creative designer at Xiaomi in Bangalore. And right now, he's pursuing his master's in design, film and communication design. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, Prashul, how are you doing? Oh, going on. Right. <laughs> so, how's your life at Ahmedabad? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's completely new for me. Uh, especially, you know, I did all my uh, formative education and all of that in Bangalore. Uh, now it's like, you know, changing gears, changing location, new people, new environment, uh, and especially transitioning from work to back to academic, right? So it's all pretty new, but I'm digging it. <laughs> yeah. Great, very great. So uh, first question uh, I would like to ask in this podcast is, can you explain what actually is graphic designing and uh, People who want to pursue this career, especially who are engineers, uh, in it, since you were also an engineer and you choose a very different career path uh, compared Correct. to other engineers, graduates that Correct. choose. And what motivated you to uh, shift into this uh, career path? And, and people who want to go to, into this field, what are the portfolios that they should be focusing on? And how is the, what, like, what is the process of trading a job into this basically? All right. Uh, well, so to tell what graphic design basically is, uh, it's 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 kind of an open-ended question all altogether. But let's say we are speaking strictly to communication, right? You know, if you are using graphic design in terms of communication, like you want to communicate something, it could be. It could be a digital ad that you see, or it could be a poster for a festival, or it could be, you know, uh, a big retail signage that you see outside and all of that. So basically, essentially, it's using elements of uh, design, uh, could be like contrast, could be like uh, different principles of design, and trying to convey what you want to say visually, right? You know, it's telling that story visually through graphic elements. It could be illustrations it could be images it could be you know photo bashing technologies where you m manipulate multiple images to make one cohesive image and then kind of tell the story that you want to say K tell your uh what, what what is that you're trying to communicate graphically or visually per se so that's essentially is graphic design but it can also be in other terms where you can also use graphic design to kind of experiment kind of be artistic about it also where you want to express some kind of opinions or uh, press on some uh, pressing topics and all of that so that's uh, graphic design uh, and to answer the question that how the transition happened from graphic design from my uh, engineering to uh, this particular field uh, it's I think it's engineering man that kind of <laughs> Uh, you know, it's a thing right now that, you know, engineers stop doing engineering things in engineering college and they find their <laughs> uh, true self within. So I think that's, it's like a spiritual path where you discover yourself what you truly want to <laughs> do and all of that. So it was same was the case with me. And uh, I started out back in my school in, you know, pre-university uh, days where uh we had this uh, kind of a meme and, you know, a patrol page running back in school and college days, uh, universities days. And uh, I kind of was uh, part of the 
group you know admins who were <laughs> maintaining the page and all of that we required like you know logos and uh, some kind of funky elements that needs to be mashed up together to make this meme and uh, back then it had just started like i think it was almost like now 10 years exactly ago that you know this meme culture and meme revolution had just begun you had all those that yes kid and <laughs> and all of that that was going on so yeah so that's when i first stumbled upon you know photoshop right you know i, I saw it online like how do you cut out background how do you use this element on of a png element paste it on some other background and all of that so that's how it started but i re- never really thought okay that would ca- uh, you know turn into a profession for me at some point of time but that that eventually happened yeah so i started experimenting ba- back there you know t- trying to make new logos and all of that then college happened uh, uh, during college also i was uh, you know actively part of the cultural uh, team and you know the organizers team who were making fest happen in college where i started you know making posters making you know banners and things like that for the college fest yeah so that that kind of gave me a push that you know this is going good <laughs> and i might have a, a better future here is what happened and yeah today you know it's worked like i kept working on myself kept experimenting new things and one thing that is Uh, really really uh, great is when you're trying something new uh, and you're experimenting with it it's like you you have nothing to lose you're not scared of it so that also pushes you to experiment more and more you know dig deeper and deeper into things and that's probably how i sharpened my skills uh, and you know saw all these youtube videos instagram reels uh, and tutorials and what not right yeah so increase my uh, skills through that and then yeah had a portfolio and then went went ahead but the click came and people uh, who want to get into this field so what are the things that sh- they should work on like if remember i take it as something like if you want to start applying for the jobs again what are the mistakes that you would hold back that no this is how i'll start applying again this is the things i would focus on you must have been making mistakes and all that thing right Uh, applying for the job. Yeah. Man. What are the things that you would focus and tell to the people? Uh, I, if I'd have to reflect on myself. I think uh, if you're someone new into this field, maybe like, especially if you're from an engineering background and like not from a, a design background itself. You know, design students have yeah. that curriculum in mind already. So they'll, they'll know what needs to be done but someone who's not from the design background maybe engineering maybe some other background as well right so uh, the idea here is to look into uh, the core concept of it uh, so when i was let's say if i go back four years five years and i was doing something i was focusing very much on how do i make the end product right you know the final design right you know that was my thinking process like right from the start if i have an idea for a poster if i have a idea for an ad or something that i would think in the end like what would be the final big picture uh, and not rather focus on the first like all the steps in between that comes from ideation till realization right so i would not focus on that my focus would be largely on the final picture that kind of puts a pressure in your head to achieve something and then when you're trying experimenting iterating on different concepts and all of that that kind of uh creates this uh thing inside you that whatever big picture you have in your mind is not being achieved so that that kind of even pushes you down and down and down and then you don't achieve what you wanted to do in the first place so but but rather than that i would focus on building the core concept of it in the first place where you know i think what is that i really want to talk about in this particular poster or an ad or anything right you know what is it that i want to convey the first thing that is the end final thing i mean even as a audience perspective or from an, or from someone who is looking at the poster if not you maybe someone else uh it's what is that they see i mean they don't they also don't see all the 
processes that went through. They just see the final thing. And what they look at is, when they look at the poster or an ad or a creative or anything, what is that they conceive? What is that they perceive, right? So that is more important than how it basically comes in a very nice package. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, I would like focus on the core concept of it uh, rather than trying to achieve some standard. So if I get the concept and the story and the underlying layers sorted out, the rest of all can just be, you know, added like salt and uh, masala on top of it and you can mm -hmm. get the final picture done. Great. Great. Oh, now, uh, I really want to ask you this, the fact that you applied on LinkedIn, right? Like Xiaomi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, can you tell the entire process of selection of uh, how you got selected in Xiaomi? Well... I don't think I can actually answer that because uh, it could be uh, what you say. All these processes are kind of confidential to e each of these companies, but then I can take you through the process of what went through, yeah, what went behind. Right. So, yeah, I mean, the first and foremost is your portfolio, man. Like, you need a very strong portfolio, right? Uh, and one of the biggest problems or challenges that young designers or someone who's getting fresh into the field uh, faces is they're not getting enough work. And without enough work, they won't get more work. Like they can't show your, uh, what do you say? You need some work in the beginning to show it to some more people. And those people will give you work seeing these. So that's kind of a big challenging task that young designers or someone who's getting fresh into the field faces. So it's like, you have to get that thing sorted out. Like, uh, initially start doing it for free, start doing it for your friends, start doing it for your family and things like that. Someone in your family might be starting a business, someone in your friend circle might be starting a new venture or a startup and things like that. If not, they might have some auspicious days, you know, wedding invites, uh, things like that. And, you can start doing that and start showing this to people. This is that they kind of, uh, you know, you start to grow. So yeah, portfolio is very, very, very important. And what you put in a portfolio is also very more important than uh, simply giving a very nice, well-packaged portfolio. I've seen a lot of portfolios where it looks really, really amazing. Like visually, very, very appealing. Uh, it's all well packaged and all of that. But like I said in the first place, the concept, the underlying concept of things is more important, right? You know, given the age of AI and technological revolutions and all of that happening, execution is getting very, very easier. Uh, but in bringing that initial concept or the idea in the first place, that's like the hardest task. And if you have experimented with AI or if you have experimented with any of the recent tools, you've seen that you throw in a bunch of words and then it generates beautiful imagery for you, right? This is, just, AI is just executing your thought process. It's not coming up with, it, it's not synthesizing uh, a fresh new perspective. You are the one feeding that initial thought, initial prompt to it, right? You are the one that's giving that direction for it. So that is more important rather than executing it beautifully, right? You can always hire better people to execute things, right? But if you don't know the direction that you're going in, if you don't know what is that you want to achieve, that becomes really, really difficult. So yeah, so I would say include experimental work in your portfolio as well, where you are trying to, you know, maybe doing something out of your own interest. Some examples might include like, you know, uh, you know, like passion projects, right? Like there might be a pressing issue in the society, maybe, you know, free speech or, you know, something happening in the society or maybe something that's very close to your heart. Maybe, you know, a tea seller near your house is facing difficulties. How are you showing his struggles coming out, right? If you work on these kind of projects, rather than the final big picture, like, Man, it's so easy to create an ad for a big e-commerce giant, right? Like, let's say 
you want to create an ad for a refrigerator company. So it's it's mainstream, man. Like there's so many refrigerator brands out there. They're all doing different different kinds of ads. If you go to Google and type refrigerator ads, get so so many examples and all of that. But when you boil it down to something very very local, uh, it becomes really difficult. You don't see much of ideas or variations for it. So when you work on these small topics, like let's say you're a, a group in a college, uh, at like you know, budding tech enthusiast group in college, and you want to be heard, like you want to uh, create a, a like a group, and you you want to recruit more people into your uh, club and all of that, and you start making small posters where you uh, creatively convey that you are a budding tech enthusiast group in the college and all of that. So that time you're solving something that's very personal, one. And also at the same time, when you put that in your portfolio, you will be much easier to explain through the process. What was your thinking process? Why did you do it in the first place? Why did you choose these colors? Why did you choose these elements? Why did you add uh, live photos uh, instead of stock for, you know, illustrations or digital uh, synthesized creators or anything like that. So it will be easier for you to explain and it will be easier even for the person recruiting you to understand what is that you are bringing onto the table, right? So that's that's about it. And also, at the same time, you have to make that distinction uh, between being someone who knows to use the tools to someone who can use the tool for his or her advantage, right? You know, that's that's more important. Right, like you'll find so many people who are really, really good at Photoshop, or Illustrator, or any of the or Canva, or any of the tools that's out there. Uh, but you'll find very small set of people who can bring out what's in here to what's on the screen through Photoshop or through Illustrator. Mm. So ideally, you have to use all of this as a medium to bring your thoughts out, rather than that being your final uh, frame or artwork or whatever. Because, I mean, I, I know a lo- lot of these talks, a lot of these design uh, <laughs> questions are all very philosophical or very uh, kind of, you know, uh, subjective also at some point of time. It, it What has worked for me might not work for you. But yeah, that's, that's how it is. <laughs> so that's how... These work. These bring closer to your heart. That's <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, can you just elaborate your life at Sean? How is it? And what are some of the projects that uh, it helped you to uh, learn, or maybe the speed up the process of learning and design? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, for me, uh, I mean, when I first graduated out of college and all of that, and I decided to. Uh, change domains and get into this. To be quite honest, I, I did my electrical engineering, right? And uh, campus recruitment for electrical engineering core was very, very limited. Like, I'm not saying it wasn't there, but I don't want to say how much it was either. But it's <laughs> limited to two years. Yeah, so uh, the core electrical aspect, of, I, I did my electrical engineering because I liked it also. It's something that I dug. Hmm. And it's not that I did by force, my family forced into it and nothing like that. I liked electrical engineering and I pursued it because of my interest in it. And also that when I finish my electrical engineering and when the time of placements and job opportunities come, uh, all of the recruiters were IT based. You know, they're all software uh, companies or, you know, service based. Again, IT, right, you know, and all of that. And I didn't want to go there. Like, what's the point? Like, I'm changing the domain anyways. Right? So, <laughs> I'm changing from an analytical engineer to someone who knows HTML, Java, CSS, uh, Python, and C, C++. And change, I, I have to still take that learning curve again to train myself from my formative electrical engineering to, again, that CSS, Java, IT. I have to, again, go through that curve and, again, train myself through it. Yeah. And I'm changing the domain anyways. So I thought might as well do it to a domain wh- which I like. And also have some basic, if not entirely, right? I have some basic knowledge and also like it. <laughs> Rather than doing something that I don't really 
लाइक सो या सो दैट वॉज द दॉट प्रोसेस एंड आई हैड अप्लाइड टू कपल ऑफ स्मॉल स्टार्टअप्स एंड थिंग्स ऑल्सो बट द थिंग हेयर इज ड्यूरिंग माई इंजीनियरिंग टाइम ऑल्सो आई यूज टू फ्री लैंड एंड आई यूज टू यू नो डू थिंग्स आफ्टर माई कॉलेज आर्ट्स राइट यू नो वर्क विद डिफरेंट स्टार्टअप्स इवेंट मैनेजमेंट कंपनीज यू नो वर्क ऑन सोशल मीडिया क्रिएटर्स बैक दैन सोशल मीडिया हैड जस्ट स्टार्टड लाइक डिजिटल एड्स एंड दैट स्पेस हैड जस्ट बिगन सो देर वॉज बिट ऑफ रूम टू एक्सपैंड इन दैट एंड आई वॉज वर्किंग ऑन इट एंड वॉट आई फाउंड देर वॉज लैक ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर इन ऑल दीज स्टार्टअप्स और इन ऑल दीज बटिंग थिंग्स आई मीन इट इज अ प्लस पॉइंट दैट यू If there isn't much of a hierarchy that's going on, you get a lot of more freedom to work and all of that. But at the same time, without structure, it kind of hampers down your uh, skills and design uh, capabilities because you are showing your skills to someone who has no knowledge about it in the first place, and he is critiquing you. He or she is critiquing critiquing you because he or she thinks that ah, my color is red. my wife my girlfriend or my uh auntie likes red color so let's do it red color there is no thinking process behind it it's just subjective ha i like red i you do red but you as a designer you have put your mind and thought and everything into it thinking that ha i yeah, for this particular brand uh maybe uh what do you say blue or cyan or some kind of those shades work really really better uh and all of that thinking of the brand perception brand and all of that you would have thought that and you've come with that color but then that guy says yeah no but i i like red do it red and you end up putting red because you want to get it through it becomes that it becomes exhausting and you're not improving in this process uh, so that's why i wanted to get into a uh you know company or a place where it would help me understand what is the entire structure of design hierarchy of like you know i'm not talking about the design itself but the commercial aspect of the trade right, you know what is that actually happens in the real world i wanted to understand more of it so that's why i thought okay uh, companies like this might really uh, help me because they'll be established and they'll have their own individual design teams inside and working with someone who is conditioned in this design environment for like 10 years or 15 years in this corporate or in this commercial world would give me a better understanding so that's why i applied over there uh, and uh, luckily uh, i got selected despite not having a design degree and all of that uh, but mainly because my portfolio was strong and my understanding of the design principles and what goes behind was quite strong and uh, yeah when i worked in shawmi i got an understanding of how the entire marketing communications work like the back end of it like why are you doing this design rather than what is that you are designing so when you understand why you can make better designs you know you can pinpoint it straight up to that uh point and all of that so yeah uh, and i worked on couple of very good projects uh like you know the Redmi Note 10 series was my first uh kind of like a big exposure a big level project because redmi smartphones in india are like the like highest selling in terms of volume and all of that it's like the driver tier 2 tier 3 and even tier 1 cities uh, and let's say between the range ranges of 10 to 25000 redmi smartphones are like so killer in that segment they're like there's no other competitions for it and a lot of college kids a lot of uh, um, now even this school uh, kids also given the covid situation all of that they've started using it so that was a big project for me i learned a lot of things what goes behind like when the stakes are high <laughs> you get to know even a small mistake how much it will impact because i still remember when uh, me learning why do we use font sizes in that hierarchy right you know those why do we use 36 points why do we use 18 points why do we use 24 points and all of that and i always thought was a difference if i if i make it 23 how would make a difference but then i really got to know what why that really happens and all of that and that kind of helped me understand design better because i was in a 
design environment along with my fellow designers in the design team. I also had someone to mentor me, to tell me what to do this, do that, uh, and all of that. I, that really helped me because since I'm not from a design background, it helped me gain that experience. Uh, and uh, that was my uh, kicking off point. But after that, Redmi Watch was my first uh, solo project where I handled it end to end. Uh, and of course, there are people uh, where I report to and show them uh, my work and they guide me towards it and all of that. But yeah, that was my solo project where I used my ideation and, you know, to bring things out. And after that, I worked on a handful of projects on a couple of smartphones, smartwatches, uh, laptops. Uh, then towards the end, I was like the point of contact for uh, the smart TV uh, segment. And uh, mm. and the last, the, just before I quit Xiaomi, I worked on three, four product launches as well, where I worked on a smart TV, a Mi smart TV, and then a Redmi smart TV, and then the first in class uh, Xiaomi's OLED TV vision. Uh, it's the first OLED TV that was launched. I worked on that also had the opportunity. And I also got opportunity to work on a Poco uh, product as well. So I got to try a lot of different, different products and different, different category of products that's more important because working on smartphones is very different and working on TVs is very different. The audience that you're catering is very different and the kind of styling that you do is very different. So that really helps to kind of bring that flexibility in you, right? So yeah, that was my entire thing in Xiaomi. I mean, if I have to tell what I actually worked on, so I was we used to work on product launches, like bringing the visual, visual identity uh, for a product. Like, let's say there is a new product coming and we build an entire branding for it. Uh, starting from web, you know, web landing pages. Then you, know, you have these partners, right? Amazon, Flipkart and all of them. So they have, like if you go to Amazon or Flipkart to buy a product, see all these images, catalog images, that 10 images that goes around. And all of that, and when you scroll down, you see much more information about each of these products. So the same, if you search for a product on me.com, you get this entire landing page where it explains what the product is, what are the technological specifications, and all of that. So, and then also in the retail and offline stages, right? You know, it, uh, if you go out, you would see hoardings, you would see newspaper print ads, you would see, you know, in, inside the retail stores itself, you will see backlight uh, signages that would be placed behind the product and all of that. So yeah, so from retail to online uh, branding, right? So that's what I worked on. And yeah, so that that was my time at Xiaomi and I really kind of learned a lot. Uh, if not for Xiaomi, it, would, it wouldn't have been this much of a learning great great uh, since you mentioned the fact that you uh, shifted your career of like wanted to do electrical engineering then you thought of like uh, becoming going into this field of design there are a lot of people who are actually like this they, they do they want to do something in electrical engineering because of this same thing the placements are not happening to very you know, correct. and then they have to do mtech separately then all that mm-hmm. Uh, okay. People who shift to software developers uh, and not actually. They start again, you know, they learn, mm. start to learn code. Correct. They learn different languages and all that. Uh, one thing I really want to ask is that uh, into this field of design and all, how do you think the making of money in this uh, matters? Maybe like, can you just elaborate the fact that can we make good amount of money in this field? Um... Man, to be quite honest, <laughs> you don't get paid in money. Initially, you get paid by exposure. <laughs> and so, uh, okay. yeah, I mean, not to dishearten someone who wants to get into this field, but but when you get into a field like design or something subjective as this, creative industry, right? You know, not just design. This is a very creative and uh, 
subjective kind of an and it's it's on the thought process like it's that kind of an industry and over here nothing is standardized like engineering or science or technology where there's only one kind of approach to do it right you know here it's you have multiple different ways to approach a problem and solve it and all of that so over here what really happens is if you're chasing the money aspect of it initially i would suggest you to not get into it because money over here it doesn't come to your hands initially at all quick and what once you are that mark right you know once you cross that barrier where you become kind of like a very good really well known designer or well known uh, personnel and all of that then money is really not a question like you might have heard that chami spent crores and crores of money for a logo you might have heard, uh learned that you know what i've seen on instagram or facebook when a brand just changes their logo and identity they spend like crores of money to get and like and all the people in the comment section were like hey, i would have done it in canva and but i paid me don't say but that's the thing <laughs> to to know to get to that stage where you know like okay recently people are changing their brand identities brand logos and all of that and they're making like small tweaks they're just probably just rounding the corners flattening out the colors and all of that uh and uh, one thing about this industry is it's very easy to to say that i could do this after you see it right so okay for the first time to make it it's like the hardest hardest thing first time like for the first time for a some like now people say nike logo is so easy i can draw it it's just a tick mark it's just a swoosh yeah. right but for the very first time when someone had to go back there and think about that right you know what do i represent nike for with a swoosh you know speed agility lighting and all of that so to come up with that simple logo mark it would have taken so much effort and time and thinking behind it and that doesn't come easily in the first place it takes years of experience and practice and all of that and also like to at the core of it understand the fact why is that you're doing it so to get that it's difficult but once you get that it's like money comes even if you don't <laughs> do much of an effort and all of that so that's that's there and if you are getting into design i think i'm not saying you know people shouldn't get i mean definitely people, some people do go to jobs because money is the biggest driving factor you know they want to be financially freedom and things like that i'm not saying that's wrong uh if you're someone who's like that and want to do it right now ui ux design is like uh, in the boom and it's being saturated also kind of so that's where the high the biggest money pool is right now so you can get into ui ux design you know you can do online courses there are free courses from google and free courses from coursera for you are you x and what if that you can do that you can definitely uh, you will get this certification uh, and then you can show that you can get a get into jobs and you'll start getting good money and the initial money that you get is in par with how much you get when you graduate from engineering and change from like for, for someone who is um, graduating as an electrical engineering joining computer science like you no know, a cs it firm so whatever money they can expect is the same they'll get in ui ux also so it's it's almost there is nothing to do with but if you're getting into something like this very niche you really need that interest without interest you can't because uh a lot of things happen inside here than what you actually uh, do it right so you need to churn your brains up so if you are not interested you can't churn it up <laughs> so that's the uh key take away here and yeah but i'm not also saying that there's no money here initial days you would have to grind <laughs> but once you gone through that you can expect a good cash load of <laughs> money is is what at least i hope <laughs> but yeah <laughs> yeah so okay um going to the next question how uh, you are right now in the national institute of design and uh, 
you were in the Ahmedabad, right? So a peep correct. How and why did you choose this masters of NID? Why particularly under this NID film and uh, no, okay. Yeah, sorry, NID. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, entire yeah. entire. Why did you choose this and uh, how much it is different from the you know something like uh, NIFT? If you see NIFT. Okay. Uh, it's for uh, fashion. Fashion. People who want to do the UI UX thing also can they also uh, apply for this uh, masters in NID? And uh, most importantly, is uh, does it require any kind of experience to apply this? And what is the like exams for it? Like that is. Um. Okay. <laughs> Why NID sounds like a question that I was asked in the interview as well, but <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, like I said, right? You know, I I didn't have <laughs> this formative education in design or you know formative training in design, and I kind of felt the lack of it as I progressed. You know, as long as your base is really solid, you can start constructing taller towers, right? That's the thing. So I wanted to, you know, make my base really solid. So that's that's one of the biggest reason I thought, you know, a master's in design uh, would really help me uh, to take bigger leaps and all of that. For you to, you know, jump, you need that solid ground in the first place. So so that's why I thought a master's program would definitely help me through this process. And I start started looking out on the web and internet. What are the best design institutes? Where I can learn and things like that. India and abroad and right now there's a trend that people are flying abroad for m- most of their programs and all yeah. that but yeah I was just seeing and I stumbled upon a couple of uh, universities and things like that especially like you mentioned NIF and IFT was also a design institute premier design institute in India and ID is also a premier design institute then you have IIT Bombay's IDC industrial design center that's also a very good design institute. Mm. Uh, and then you have all these private uh, kind of uh, institutes like, you know, Manipal, MIT, ID, and then different, different, even Bangalore has multiple private design institutes. RV has its own design institute. Uh, so I saw a lot of things. Then I went into their websites to see what is that they are doing, what is that they are teaching, and all of that. And I felt... NID's curriculum, NID's kind of approach uh, gelled better with what I was looking for. Uh, so, like I said, I wanted to get into the concept, like at the root level of it. Right? You know, why is that you're designing? So when you answer why, you can start designing better. So at NID, NID focuses on that primarily, uh, like to get into that grassroots level, right? You know, to understand the basic fundamental concept uh, behind any of the design problems and solutions. So that's the first step in design also. Like if you're not familiar with the process of design, design starts with, you know, brainstorming, like ideation, brainstorming, prototype, and so on and so yeah. forth. Iteration, feedback. The design is a closed loop. It's not like you design it, it's done. Once you have the final design, you look at it, you show it to different people, you get the feedback, and then you again go back to iteration, like what can be fixed and it and all of that. So if you don't understand this why that you're designing, this whole feedback loop will be increasing. So once you understand this why, it becomes much, much, much easier and simpler to have a narrowed down kind of an approach towards your solution. I mean, I'm saying towards the end, but initially you branch out, you find multiple options and all of that, but that's different. Yeah, so NID was something that kind of had my interest from day one that, okay, yeah, this is something that really is catering to what that I want to learn and all of that. Uh, And also I've shifted to film and uh, video communication rather than graphic design, primarily because that's kind of where my interest was was also. that light because I liked ads and ad films and you know uh, promos and short form of promotional content and things like that that's where my heart always was even back in college also I was very uh, much fond of making uh, you know promos for festivals promos for 
events and things like that. That's that's where I really liked it. And even when I worked in Xiaomi, uh, if you look at it, it, it was always about to sell a product. It's always about making that promotion content. Uh, so that's where my heart really lied into. That's that's probably why uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, get deeper into this uh, industry also. So yeah, I film and video communication was why I choose that discipline because I like doing ads and films and short form content and things like that. So film and video communication discipline, I again went through what is the course curriculum and things like that. And it again gelled with what I really want to uh, do. There are bigger and uh, kind of, you know, premier institutes for film uh, in India. Again, uh, FTII, Pune is like a very big film institute in India and all of that. But again, I didn't want to get into the technical aspect of filmmaking where you understand really well how to use a camera, how to use the lighting techniques and things like that. I didn't want a technical approach towards filmmaking where I learn what goes behind making these films or ads and all of that. But rather, again, understand the basics, understand the at the core of it. I wanted to be someone who would direct a film, right? You know, I would, I would want someone to conceptualize that ad in the first place and then make it also. So I wanted to be that person rather than being someone who would execute commands from someone else. Because given the age of AI, if I'm someone who is executing, I'll definitely be outplayed. I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not going to happen. So yeah, so that's what I thought. And uh, NID's curriculum and course culture and uh, all of that was really, really good. Uh, and it gelled and yes definitely it's kind of hard to get into NID it's not that of an easy thing because there are just 19 seats uh, in the first place so a lot of people write the entrance exams and you know if you have written any competitive exam like IITs JE and things like that you know it's really really hard given the population of India <laughs> and the number of people who <laughs> take up the exam and all of that so yeah, so NID has three rounds, basically. Uh, it's like first one is a prelims round, and then you have the mains round. In mains, you have interview as well. So three levels of kind of like screening that happens, uh, where mains and interview is like part of one becomes one thing, and you have prelims. So primarily two, but if you break it apart. So yeah, prelims is kind of like Short, short screening a lot of people you have bulk like thousands of people right and you want to get rid of all the um, you just want to pick the best out of them and then go to the next one so that's that's why prelims is and prelims is not that hard if you if you are I mean to be honest all the three rounds aren't that hard they're very straightforward and simple and easy if you know the fundamentals and basics and if you have some point of experience working on design and things like that it's it's quite easy to crack it unless and until your fundamentals are strong. So yeah, uh, design aptitude will be in the first round. Uh, it's called NID DAT, NID Design Aptitude Test. And then you have two papers in the first round. Uh, one is like general aptitude. You have all these basic aptitude questions like to visualize the number of surfaces on a given uh, shape and form and all of that. And different, different questions. General knowledge, per se, like, uh, questions like, you know, S they show a logo, SPI's logo, and you have to kind of guess which one is the correct SPI logo and things like that. It's pretty straightforward. If There is probably no correct way to prepare for this because unlike IITs, JEs, you have a textbook approach for it. This has no really uh, that kind of an approach. And then... Then it becomes discipline specific since I'm up applying for film and video communication. The questions are catered for film and video communication, where they ask you questions like, you know, write a sequence. Like they show eight pictures, uh, eight random pictures. You choose five pictures out of it, make a sequence out of it, and write a story. Uh, like this happens, this happens, this happens, and all of that. So. That's your prelims, and after that you have mains. Mains again doesn't have a, a specific pattern or thing that you can prepare for. Uh, and again, 
it's also a discipline specific. Uh, if it, uh, since I applied for film and video, uh, the questions asked was also based on film and video. It's also again similar. You have to kind of write a sequence of stories. They play some audio tracks. You listen to them. You kind of visualize what is that and all of that. So that's the mains. And then you have your interview where you show your work, where you talk with the interview uh, panel and all of that. They ask you questions, standard approach. Uh, but I think what they're trying to see is your kind of approach towards solving the problem, right? You know, how is that you're taking it rather than what is your final solution? So that's what they're trying to probably look at. Uh, and yeah, so was fortunate enough uh, and yeah got through NIDs all these rounds and all of that and was able to get a seat now I'm pursuing <laughs> it's been two two months hey. uh, does that require any kind of experience to apply for this course of like people who just graduated from you know in any brief tent of direct gap I mean like I said, right, like, you need some understanding of what happens. And if if I'm someone who has just graduated of engineering and I like design and I apply, see, there are chances that, you know, you might get selected and you might get through, given that you have some kind of past experience that you have gathered. The design is always about your experience. What you have seen, touched, you just yeah. bring it back. So it's always that and... I still remember I have I didn't like prepare prepare for an ID uh, because you know my parents would ask me like you know you, are, you have this entrance exam coming up why aren't you studying and things like that and I would always tell them what I didn't learn for the last 24 years I can't learn it in one or two days <laughs> right so that's basically design so uh, it's all your past experiences how we are trying to look for solutions from that so that's ideally about it and obviously the culture at NID is to have different perspectives to one particular problem I guess so there I have a lot of my peer groups who, who aren't even from uh, the design background someone has done uh, you know science some someone has done mathematics you know journalism things like that and they've come to film now and they don't have any prior experience in film or like me, I have done engineering and I've come here. So everyone's like that and all that matters is what is your approach towards it. So if you are confident and if you are in that realm, right, you know, this is what I want to do and this is my approach towards it, definitely, man, you can graduate out of engineering and straight away apply. <laughs> no one's stopping you. Boom. Right. So how's your life at a nine year rank? Ah, oh, it's fun or is it too strict? <laughs> uh, I mean, since this being masters, right, you know, it's, I mean, one thing that I really like about NID's uh, teaching culture or the academic uh, pedagogy or something, it is like, they don't, it's not a textbook approach. Uh, they believe in something called as learning by doing and more importantly learning by learning from your mistakes like the more you make iterations the more and more work effort you put in you make a lot of mistakes and from those mistakes you learn so that is what they focus on rather than showing you a textbook picture and saying huh this is the design that i've found to you do it right it's if you do that then you just be executing the same design rather than taking your approach. So that's something that I really like here at NID. And yes, of course, it is taxing on you. It is, uh, you know, kind of puts a pressure on you, mental pressure, you know, physical pressure as well, uh, where you have to kind of, it kind of becomes laborious at a point that you are doing a lot of, lot of more work. But yes, it is very interesting. Like when you do one work and you are attempting for the next one, you have learned so much. And that first one that you have done, it was the second time, the second iteration of it. You are much more excited. And then when you make a mistake and when you do a third one, you know what mistakes you should do and you're doing the third one. So 
multiply that, let's say you're doing like the 50th one or the 45th one or the 60th one or something. Just imagine the number of mistakes you would have made and the number of things you have learned in those last 45, 50 iterations. So definitely would have changed your thinking process through the, through this journey. And definitely will be a lot better than following this textbook approach of looking at something and copying it. Right? So yeah, it's that's how NID works and I really like it. And it's uh, kind of expanding things in your brain. Like you can feel it that, you know, I'm learning a lot every day. And also that people that you interact here, uh, given that everyone is from the same kind of background, uh, background in a sense, like, I mean to say, uh, everyone's creative here, right? You know, uh, so everyone's kind of has their own perspective towards things. And that kind of expands your, like, your limits. Like, you want to push yourself more. Uh so yeah, that's that's how an idea is, and really liking it so far. <laughs> so far, so good. Fuck <laughs> it. Okay, how much years is this course? I know. Uh, it's two and a half years. Um, yeah, two two and a half years of program. Two years, and the last six months will be something called as your graduation project. GP is what they say. Uh, uh, it's like your final thesis, right? I have to say a correlate to engineering so it's your final project that you do and that's six months but two years of training for it so yeah and if if I have to say this is not academic academic it's more of work so you work a lot and one really good thing about this is uh, it's a fair example like let's say this is Let's say if I say this much is how much I know. Uh, what I don't know is also increases as much as I know. <laughs> like, the more I know about something, the more I don't know about things also. So that's a uh, really, really, you know, mind wakening thing. So the more you... It's like that water, right? Like from the surface, you'll... You look at it, it doesn't look deep enough. But the moment you put your leg in it, you know how much deep, and you start walking away from the shore, from the bank, the more deeper, deeper it gets, as m more and more you're getting involved in. So, so it's like that. So, uh, and try, and the more you start digging deep into things, the more you want to know also about it. So, yeah. I think two and a half years is I right now I feel that's very less. <laughs> it's, uh, but yeah, just uh, two two and a half year program uh, for masters. So this is the last question, and then uh, can you explain the fact that you have also been into the shooting for you and know, like, been into the photography you know nothing. Even I love to uh, tell stories to people, you know, visual stories mm -hmm. and that. Now, how do you see it as this person who is very enthusiastic about this, this photography, filmmaking, all that, and getting into design? Uh, does that really matter? Huh. Uh, that's a good question, actually. Um, so, uh, film or photography or something uh, has two kind of approaches towards it. Like one approach is that artistic, where it's part expression, like you want to tell something and you don't follow any of these rules or uh, la regulations or ru principles or anything like that. And you kind of express yourself through the medium of photography or film. That's... I think one kind of an approach. And the other kind of approach is also problem solving. If you look at it, uh, let's say you are making an ad film or if you are making uh, a documentary where you are trying to tell the problems faced by a particular group of people in the society and all of that. And you are trying to, you know, tell some story about 
uh, the problems faced by someone yourself or while you were growing up or if you're making an ad to a company where you're trying to sell their product or you're trying to do something like that, that becomes problem solving now, right? So you're trying to solve some problem and whenever there is problem solving, the design. So design comes in. So the approach you, that you take towards that problem is essentially the design process. So I would say since my approach is on the second one, uh, where at least for now, I, I'm open to things. I don't know how it'll, maybe it'll grow upon me in the future. I don't know. But what I'm saying is right now, I'm I'm this the second category of person where I'm trying to be that someone who makes ads and films and things like that. And for me, I felt design, the, this process is much more, I know it reflects upon me better. So that's that's why. But like you said, if someone who's into photography and films and they want to express themselves, then I kind of feel that this design approach might limit themselves. Like, you know, it kind of restricts themselves to a point. But yeah, but it's again subjective, right? And it varies from people to people and person to person. Yeah, so but I think since for me in, as an individual because I've boiled down my niche to that that I want to do this in the near future that's why design. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pleasure and thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I had a very great conversation with you. And you I'm sure a lot of people uh, quite have learned and lot from today when we your experience. Uh-huh. But I want you. to move it to design with that thing. I hope we can make more content. The sure, sure, definitely, man. Design of the more worth podcasts with you. Thank you, sure, definitely. Thank you so much. Okay. Sure.